round of applause, but another round of applause for the new IPF Super Featherweight Champion of the World. You know, I think uh, sometimes you can fiddle your way to a world title, you can get a close decision, but the way you announce yourself on the world scene is just to produce one of the best knockouts I think we've ever seen li live. Um, Joe Caldina, stunning victory to become world champion tonight. Thank you all for attending, and over to you for questions. Joe, you've made history for, for Wales tonight. You've joined a very, very illustrious group. Try and put it into words for us. Yeah, it's amazing. Obviously, third, uh, Wales 13th um, world champion. Cardiff's third world champion. Um, world champion. World champion. World champion. Um, I know a lot of people are saying 13 is a lucky number, but if it's got a three in it, it's my lucky number. Three is my lucky number, so if it's got a three in it, it's lucky for me. So I'm just happy that. I've ticked off my, one of my goals now, which is becoming a world champion, and now it's time to secure my family and potentially unify. Most people thought if you were going to win, Joe, that it would go to points. You very much didn't follow the script on that. No, the, the thing is, I've never gone out there to try and knock anyone off. We train hours and hours and hours in the gym, me and Tony, to, to go through a hard 12 rounds, and that's what we do. If the, if the shot's there, then we'll take it and tonight the shot was there and I took it. We worked on that same shot hour for hours and um, we call it the Durant. And I seen the opening and yeah, I just uh, let it go and good night. Eddie, is this beyond your, even what you imagined possible? Yeah, I mean, I did, you know, I, I said yesterday that I just had a feeling that Joe would win this fight by stoppage, but not like that, not in the second round. You know, the first round, it was quite a close round, but you could see how strong a gower was, and I, I felt like Joe actually, you know, needed that round to settle down because the atmosphere—he's never experienced anything like that. I know he's boxed at Millennium Stadium and stuff like that, but that was a, an incredible atmosphere. And once he settled down in the fight, you know, it was just his patience, his timing, and you know what these guys have been working on for a long, long time. And like I said, there's different ways to win a world title. You see the numbers virally for that knockout now all around the world. That's that's how you become a star. And um, you know, people talk about, was he good enough to beat a gal? Well, the answer was convincingly yes. And now you start talking about the likes of Shakur Stevenson, who is, for me, a pound for pound great fighter. But is there any fighter at 130 pounds that you would give more of a chance to of winning against Shakur Stevenson than Joe Caldina? And the, the, the truth is no. So that's for the future. You know, I know he's already come out, Shakur Stevenson, and said he's happy to come to the UK. And, Maybe that comes in time. We've got Rakimov as a mandatory. We've got Zelfa Barrett's a big domestic fight. He just opens up so many doors tonight. And it was a massive night for Welsh boxing. You know, we talked about, really, it's the, you know, the, the scene has been quite dead. And, and now Joe has a chance to completely invigorate that scene and bring massive fights back to Wales. How um, exhilarating is it for you having taken him, obviously, from an amateur to a... Yeah, side? that's always extra special because they put their trust in me. You know, I'm so happy for Tony as well because you know, Joe identified Tony Sims when he turned pro as the guy to work with and also decided that I'm going to leave Wales, I'm going to leave my family and have to make sacrifices to come up to Essex as he has done for a long time. Um, and you know, he's had, it's, it's not been plain sailing for him, he's never really had the chance to build his profile because he's been inactive, he had that year out in the middle and also the World Championship fight was so close that he hasn't really been taking big chances in those fights that you shouldn't really take when you're on the verge of a world title. So the preparation for this probably wasn't ideal and that was even more impressive, you know, bearing in mind the result. So you've said before, all I want to be is a world champion, I'm not interested in being famous. That, that punch is going to make you famous. Yeah, I, I, know, I know that, but it, top and bottom of it, it is, I'm, that's not me. You'll probably catch me walking in town tomorrow going doing a bit of the shopping and if anyone wants to stop me and this, yeah, I'll take photos and all that comes with it but for me it's not about the fame and um, being a celebrity and all that sort of stuff. That's not me. Um, I'll probably beat my mum tomorrow I'll smoke a cigar or something like that outside my mum's front garden um, where I don't drink. So, uh, yeah, just, I just wanted to be a world champion. I've ticked that off now and now it's time to secure my family. Are you tempted by the football tomorrow? Because I'm sure they'd like to I'm, get you I'm there. going, I'm going anyway. I, they, they've sorted me tickets. Um, big thanks to JD. They've sorted me uh, tickets. And uh, it just, it's a shame that, obviously, I've got to give this back to Ogawa. So I'll be walking out on the pitch, I'm sure. Congratulations. Thank you. Joe, we've seen you so calm, focused, and composed all week. Finally, an obstacle when the referee waved it off. Can you put into words what was going through your mind then? 
Not really. I, 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 knew, I knew he wasn't getting that. As soon as I hit him and I seen his head bump, that's it. I started, I would have been jumping on the rope, but the fact that the, if I didn't go to the neutral corner, he won my count, so um, the neutral corner, and then when he did wave it off, that's when the, the place of rugby. But um, yeah, it's an amazing feeling to get a win like that for a world title in my hometown. Um, what about that season? Uh, you've been you know, in the arena and you've been called for other boxers, but it was full for you tonight. And it's not like many of those people in the, in the arena know you knew you personally as well. Yeah, uh, a lot of them. I, I think personally, I've done uh, about just shy of a thousand tickets myself, um, and people were still asking me today for tickets. Obviously, I'm not even gonna answer the phone because um, I'm trying to zone in. But um, I had to send a lot of people to stuff over and stuff like that, and it was a great at atmosphere. And I think um, Eddie was a bit reluctant to come back to Cardiff because there was nothing really happening here. Obviously, I was, I've been injured for a long time. I think I had 18 months where I was inactive. Um, like you said, it's, it's, I haven't been playing sailing. But now I'm back. I'm IBF champion of the world. And now it's time to bring big nights of boxing back to Cardiff, back to Wales, and give some of the, the other fighters, the talented fighters from Wales, an opportunity to showcase their talent. Because there's, there's a lot of talent for this. The big promoters um, like Eddie. This, this, he have, there's not many boxers from Wales on his, on his books. It's only myself. Um, on there, so um, yeah, it's, it's it's time to 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 bring big nights back to Cardiff, and tonight's where it all starts. We can certainly have big nights here in this arena, but there's a Cardiff City Stadium, there's a Principality Stadium. Do you think they're very far away? A unification, Shakur Stevenson. Nah, if if that's if that's what's around the corner, City Stadium, no problem. I'd rather fight the City Stadium um, for unification, Shakur. Um, that'd be amazing. But, like I said, I'm going to enjoy this moment. This is my time. Um, I don't want to know who I'm fighting next. So, well, that's maybe in a week's time we can start picking up the phone and I'll leave Eddie and um, Tony and Charlie to do that. And yeah, that's when you'll start uh, planning after maybe a week or two of relaxing and enjoying the moment. Wonderful, well done. Thank you. A golf on a holiday, I understand. I'm going to play golf tomorrow, I think. But What's day tomorrow? Sunday? No, Monday. I'm gonna play golf, and then I'm gonna uh, go on holiday. Take my missus away because I missed her thirtieth birthday. She, I have to take her to. I was in camp actually for her thirtieth, and her, her birthday was on the twenty-first of, of May, which is when Guati inspired her. So her birthday present was coming to London and watching Guati inspire. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so I'm gonna take her away somewhere, somewhere nice, and just have a little relax. Celebrate your own 30th birthday as well. Yeah, because I missed that also um, in December. Fight. Yeah. Joe, how much credit do you want to give to the man in the 26? Listen, everything. He I've owes done me tonight. a pair of the boot on shoes. I've already asked to so see if they got your size, they haven't got your size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, he, listen, everything. He knows how hard I work, but. He pushes me to the limit and he makes sure I do everything. He don't, he don't feel sorry for me one bit when I'm tired. He makes sure every box is ticked and tonight it's all down to him. Obviously I go in there and do the bits, but he's, he's the man that sets the game plan and puts me through my paces. And that shot I hit him with tonight, we've been working hours and hours and hours in the gym on that shot. So for me, I've just thanked Tony. I like to shake his hand, he's a great man. Um, obviously my father he lives in Malta and when I'm um, in camp he's like a second father to me I live with him and um, yeah he's a great guy he looks after me he gives me not just obviously advice on the boxing and stuff like that and how free uh, advice how to live my life and um, yeah he's a great man and I'm just happy and grateful that I'm in the stable with him and he's uh, he's backing me Eddie normally sort of promises fights as well that's his once in a world title. Is the first thing he said to me. Yeah. Oh, that's the first thing he said well, to me. Well, I know he does sky, he, he's been doing Sky Dweller, so I said I'll have the chocolate one. Okay. But he, 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 he can see the prices like that. was the first <laughs> thing. <laughs> that was the first thing out of first well, thing. I wouldn't yeah. mind the Patek, because yeah. I've, I've got a few Rolex myself. Oh, have you? Oh, I, 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 I love the Patek. Yeah. It's the first thing he said, Joe, you've done it. He said, I'll have the chocolate dial. I will make it back up on the next one. You get the money back, but um, yeah, I just listen. I'm, I want to thank Eddie, um, the zone, Matchroom, for getting this fight over the, over the line, and the same Charlie also for um, sealing this fight. 
people people don't know as well the, the backstory to this fight. You know, and obviously Charlie and Tony and Joe know it well. Is that you know, we made this fight about 12, 13 weeks ago, and um, there was a situation with the IBF where Rakimov, who was a mandatory, had a Joe medical. Joe still don't know. I oh, didn't. Never told him. Never told him. Okay, we we well, never told we'll him. We'll tell you now. Want to disturb his camp. The uh, the fight fell through because the IBF ordered a fight between a Gower and Rakimov, and basically. We asked for an exception from the IBF and they said no. And this was six weeks ago. This is why we were late announcing the fight, really. And the fight fell through and we had to go and we paid for the exemption for the IBF to request it. They said no. Then we had to go and negotiate with Rakimov and basically pay him to step aside to allow this fight to take place on the condition that he will be next as a mandatory, which we know that he is as well, subject to unifications and whatever. But so it was a it was an expensive process, but unfortunately, being as close as we are with Joe, Tony and Charlie, we couldn't let him down. So we had to get it over the line, and that's why we were late announcing it. But we we lost the fight, and uh, we managed to get it back. And I'm very glad we did. Oh, my, my end would have went. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You were nearly getting the phone call. So oh, bad news. I didn't tell him because because uh, I didn't want to. I'd rather tell him it hundred percent I know yeah. than tell him. Like all through, he'd already done like six, seven, eight weeks through camp. I just didn't want to tell him, so it was an hard secret to keep away. But and, obviously, and Eddie and talk, Eddie was talking to Charlie, and like what Eddie said there, you know, he's done unbelievable getting his fight together because up until say four or five weeks ago, it weren't going to happen. And I said to Tony and Charlie at the time, obviously, the money that I'm spending to pay Rakimov to step aside will, would be the, the Rolex, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next week, don't think that you've got away with that, yeah, mate. Uh, like you'll make that up on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about that. Joe, you're a proud family man. Uh, the first round was quite tough tonight, but you came through. Uh, what, what would you want to use that moment to teach your kids at home? Listen, my kids don't watch me fight. I won't let them watch it. It's, it's not that I don't want them to see anyone hitting their father or getting upset. It's not. It's not what I want. Like maybe, like tomorrow, I'll let them watch it. But to, to be honest, I don't want them watching me fight. It's. Um, I just want to keep them away from that. So yeah, it's, it's. It'll be nice for me to. Obviously, I can't take this home with me. But when my belt arrives, it'll be nice to present them with a belt and. They just look at it, probably hold it once or twice, have a photo of it, and then just chuck it on the floor. Um, so yeah, it, it'd be nice, but yeah, I, I try and keep them away from from the boxing. And you deserve to celebrate this victory, but we always look ahead. Um, Zelfa did his job tonight. If you if that fight does get made, we were thinking Manchester Arena is quite big. Would you go to Manchester for that Manchester, fight? Manchester, uh, and you can play me over a million pounds. Yeah, <laughs> but listen, it's my night. I'm the champion. I'll do what I like now. So yeah, Manchester Arena's big, but um, so is Cardiff City Stadium. But like you said, you look up, you look ahead. Tonight is my night, and I won't be looking ahead. I'll look. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking to go out now, have a shower, and then go out to party and celebrate. Congratulations. Thank you. Right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, the new IBF World Champion. <laughs>